Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. A little bit later than normally because this morning I need to take the dog to the airport to do all kinds of export documents because soon we will be leaving and you need to do all this export stuff on time. In today's video, of course, looking at Bitcoin, where are we going to go at the moment? I have four charts to show you exactly what I think is going to happen. Of course, a trading tip, a travel tip, some live advice, talking about the news, huge news, and yes, answering a very difficult question to answer for me of one of the followers, but I'm gonna try to answer it. So watch the complete video, start by giving the video already a thumbs up, please, and share it already with all your friends and family because they really should see all of the information that I'm gonna share with you guys today. The first chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart, of course, Bitcoin on Bybit. Uh, we can see that the price is beautifully ranging between those two green lines. The top green line comes all the way back from the previous all time high, the highest candle close in that uh, previous all time high in 2021. And that bottom one comes from the volume created in the last couple of weeks, guys. So we can see that we had resistance at that green line, that bottom run. We broke it, we came back, we retested it, and now we got, again, resistance at the top line. So we will be ranging in between those two areas of volume. That's always healthy when we just had a huge run. That also happened over here. After that huge run, we can see we came up, and then we start to range between that red and that green line before we broke out again. So it's not strange that there is now this uh, small period of rest for the Bitcoin price, there will be moments again that we will break out above that green line and really close full candles with their body above the previous all-time high, above 70,000 US dollar, and really call it, yes, that is an all-time high. Not just a wick, but a full four-hour body or a day body or a weekly candle above the previous all-time high. That is the most positive thing that we want to see now. This chart is way more important. On this chart, you can see the days per range. And yes, Bitcoin is doubling on the left side. So if you look to the left side, all these numbers, one to two, for four to eight, to 16 to 32, and all the way up to a million dollar, every time the range is doubling. Now we can see in the purple bars, how many days we have spent in certain ranges. For example, the range between 8,000 and 16,000, we spent 556 days. The range between 16,000 and 32,000, we spent 600 days. The range between 32 and 65,000, we spent also 600 days. Now the range between 65 and 130,000, we only spent five days. It won't take long that that purple bar that now is showing five days will be way longer. We will probably in the end be spending also between the 600 and maybe even 1000 days in the future in that range. And from there we will take it to the next range, 130k to 260k. We start to fill that bar with days and maybe after that to 500k and after that to a million. Yes, I'm not talking about this bull market, I'm talking about the gold rush in Bitcoin all the way till the year 2034. 2024 to 2034 is the gold rush in Bitcoin. And we will go and create purple bars in those levels between 65 and 130 and 260 and 520 Ks. That is how Bitcoin moves. It's the most scarce asset on the world from the halving in April 2024. There's nothing more scarce. There's nothing more convenient if you travel. There's nothing more easy to store. There's nothing more safe to store. This is going to be the best performing store of value of the whole world. And everyone wants a piece of it. Because slowly, very slowly, everyone will understand the power of Bitcoin. And for you now, it's very important that during this bull market, we will have drawdowns, corrections, dips, crashes, whatever you call it. There will be many. Just look to the top of the chart, that red area. These are all the drawdowns. Look to 2015 to 2017, those two years of bull market, a shitload of drawdowns. If you kept accumulating, you kept making profit. Don't let the strong hands buy up your weak hands Bitcoin. These dips are there for buying, not for crying. 
The dip we had just was a 15% dip. You should have bought the fuck out of that dip. Look to 2019 bear market to 2021. Again, those two years. A shitload of drawdowns. But we did go from 3K to 70K. Now again, 2023 to 2025. There will be a shit little drawdowns, small ones, big ones, it doesn't matter. Keep stacking more Bitcoin. Keep adding them to your portfolio as there will be a new all-time high, probably above 100k, so you will be in profit. And there will be a moment to exchange them again into stable coins to buy back more of them. But maybe, maybe in the far future, you don't even need to sell your Bitcoins anymore. If all the institutional adoption is taking place and maybe goes viral all over the world and governments, then the value of Bitcoin could easily go to above a million dollars per Bitcoin. This is a very interesting chart uh, that shows you the all-time highs that we create in the halving period. So we can see in the first halving period, we made in total 50 ti 52 times a new all-time high. In the second halving period, we make 74 times a new all-time high. And it's a daily close, so that's a day closing higher than the previous all-time high. Now the third halving, at the moment, 34 all-time highs. But the strange part of the third halving is that one of those all-time highs was just created before the fourth halving period. If you now look back to the other ones, you can't see one of these white vertical lines before the second halving not before the first halving and also not before the third halving line because mostly they happened after the halving. Now the first halving line was already before the halving so it counts to this halving period, 34 autumn highs. So we still need to start and make new autumn highs in this new fourth halving period after mid-April. Very cool chart. I hope you really enjoyed all those charts, guys. Yes, short-term volatility is amazing for the traders among us. We can do some shorts, we can do some longs, we can make a shitload of profits over there. Bitcoin fell down completely from that beautiful level of almost 70K to even below 60K, 59K I think was the bottom. That's a beautiful trading setup, of course. But I love those other charts way more. Those charts that are showing you these price areas where we're going to move with Bitcoin. You know, these beautiful orange bars that we spend a certain amount of days in that certain price range. Now, we are moving up from 65 to 130K price range now. We spent five days already there. It will be a shitload of more days that we are going to spend in that price range, believe me. And after that, we could even go higher price ranges, but that will take another couple of bull markets. But that's exactly how Bitcoin moves. The scarcity of Bitcoin, 21 million, and the continuous growth of demand will push Bitcoin into these higher price ranges and we will start to spend more and more days in those price ranges than the other price ranges. That's how Bitcoin moves. That were the charts for today. Let's quickly jump now into the trading tip. The first part of the trading tip is my question to you guys. Did you buy that dip? I gave you the trading tip two days before the dip. I told you if we dip, buy that dip. Did you buy the dip? I hope you did because it was a huge dip. It fell from 70K all the way down below 60K again. That's like a 15% dip. That's a beautiful moment to stack more Bitcoins. So that was the first part. The second part of the trading tip is at the moment I'm investing in about 10 interesting projects that I want to share with you guys. I will start to name all 10 of them, but if you have a pen, please make some notes and do your own research always. I have invested in these 10 projects because I believe they will blow up in this bull market. So the first one is of course paid network. Then we have Ether games. Then we have Commonwealth. Then we have CoinSwap. Then we have CreditSwap. Then we have DGI. Then we have FMC. Then we have Dordex. Then we have Chart AI and we have Ghoul Swap. Those 10 projects I have invested in because I believe the teams, I understand the tokenomics, and I do believe they have a great marketing strategy. So I believe these projects will do very well in this next upcoming months in the Bitcoin bull market. So Bitcoin is still my king, but you always ask me which short term plays are you playing? At the moment, 
my short term plays are those 10 projects. So there's way more projects, there's a full list of all the altcoins, layer ones, artificial intelligence that I have invested in in my Telegram groups. But the 10 projects I'm playing short term is these amazing projects. And a few of them are not really short term. And there's also a few of them that I will stay in longer because they will really, really outperform the rest of the market as well. Like, for example, Ether Games, DGI, FMC, Chart AI, just look how beautiful they already have their products up and running. And that's amazing to see. The 10 products you need to keep an eye on trading tip for today. I have two amazing travel tips for today. The first travel tip is if you travel, for example, in Thailand, always compare all the taxi apps out there. So in Thailand, they are using Grab, they are using Bolt, and they are using InDrive. Three different apps with three different prices when you book a taxi. So I always compare them because sometimes Grab is like 600 baht for like a 15 to 20 minute drive. And then Bold, mostly cheaper with 200 baht. So that's like one third of the price. Now, InDrive, you can negotiate your price. So you can just say, hey, I want to pay this for that trip. And then taxi drivers will start to negotiate with you and then you will come to a price. So it's three beautiful apps that you can use in Thailand uh, to book all kinds of trips. Now, the second travel tip for today is if you are traveling with a dog, make sure that all your paperwork are okay. Because if you go into Thailand with a dog, it's import a dog into Thailand and it's export a dog from Thailand again. So you need to have your paperwork organized. So the export part, we did it in Bangkok. That was pretty hard, pretty difficult because there's a lot of waiting line and there's a lot of people, it's very busy. And today we did it in Phuket. Phuket, perfect service. Not many people will take you 45 minutes. You go there with your dog, you show them all the documents that you have, you know, the dog's passport and everything. They sign all the stuff, 45 minutes and you're out. But you need to do it on time before your flight. Also, when we left Portugal, we needed to do the same. In Portugal, we need to do export papers. We took them, when you fly, you show the export papers, you take them into Thailand, you get your import papers, etc. So it's a bit of a hassle if you travel with a dog to Thailand, but if you ask my wife and my kids, it's definitely worth it. So that was, a, uh, I think it's worth it as well, by the way, <laughs> no, no, it's good. I like daddy, I like daddy. It's just a lot of work, you know, it's a lot of work. And it's more difficult now to go, for example, a weekend to Singapore or Bali, because then you need to do the same thing as again, to go there and come back. So it's a lot of work uh, to travel with a dog. So the travel tip two is, um, really think well before you buy a dog for your kids, if you want to travel. Now, let's jump into the next part. No rest. No, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil was on my trail. I've been running. 